obviously not in my office, not in the studio at all, but I am live because we have to do our weekly custom. Let's talk in Clex. Here at Remar Review, don't be waiting. It's here, it's now, it's, it's now. It's Let's Talk NCLEX. And I made a point to come on here specifically because I was just thinking, you know, maybe I'll just post the answer, but I needed to say this to you all today. The NCLEX question this week was the reason why people felt NCLEX all the time. It was the perfect example of why you're failing NCLEX despite the fact that you find yourself studying for six weeks, studying for eight weeks, and then you come to the test, you get a question like this, oh, it's too much, it's too much. I, for you guys who don't know me, for you guys who don't know me, my name is Regina Callion. I am the NCLEX instructor for Remar Review. I'm happy to be here, but I'm gonna get on you guys, you know, for the weekend because I want us to really reevaluate how we've been thinking about NCLEX questions. And I want us to reaffirm the fact that we know the information despite the situations that, despite the situations that we find ourselves in when we take the exam, all right? I'm going to do this live Facebook and then I want you guys to check out the website because there are some of you who need to connect with me. And the way that you do that is from the website, remarreview.com. You go there, you get the NCLEX review products, you get um, access to my free trial, access to the boot camp, the things that you know that will support you on this journey, you find them on the website, remarreview.com. So watch this, go to the website, check it out. Hello everyone, I am happy that you are here today. Um, let's do our NCLEX question, okay? It was, a nurse is caring for a client who was involved in a serious motor vehicle accident. The client is unresponsive. The client's attorney comes to visit the client and requests medical information to validate a proper lawsuit. What is the best response by the nurse? What is the best response by the nurse? Let me read it again for you guys that are just coming in. Our NCLEX talk NCLEX question for this week was, a nurse is caring for a client who was involved in a serious motor vehicle accident. The client is unresponsive. The client's attorney comes to visit the client and requests medical information to validate a proper lawsuit. What is the best response by the nurse. Here are our responses. Congratulations, Elizabeth. I see you passed your NCLEX. Here are the responses for the situation. Inform the attorney on the client's medical treatment. We're looking for what the nurse should do in this situation. Should she inform the, the attorney on the client's medical treatment? Should the nurse contact the hospital's ethics committee? Three, call nearest of kin to obtain consent to speak to the attorney, or four, notify the, the physician. So you have a situation here, let me just jump in here. You have a situation where you're caring for a patient, uh, the patient is unresponsive, an attorney comes in, says to the nurse, I need to see the client's medical information, I'm here to validate a lawsuit, I'm here to um, gather information for a lawsuit, what is the best response by the nurse? I want you guys to see it again. The situation here, um, yeah, congratulations, Liz. We are so, so happy for you. Uh, I need to see your video. So the, the responses were, should the nurse inform the attorney on the client's medical treatment, contact the hospital's ethics committee, call the nearest kin to obtain consent to speak to the attorney, or notify the physician? And as we posted this this week, there were so many answers coming in. And I thought to myself, man, guys, we have to, we have to be able to pull out our responsibility as nurses and stay laser focused on that during the exam. Because so many of the answers were incorrect that it just, um, it just re, it brought a, <laughs> it brought a realization to my mind that this is the reason why people felt NCLEX because what NCLEX does 
is they present you information, they present you scenarios that you've never been in as a way to really find out if you know what your responsibility is as a nurse. And, and that's it. Like, that's what this test is based on, what your client needs and what is your role in providing that need. And so if we're not able to identify what our role is as a nurse in a situation, we will always, we will always continue to not clear these questions. And it, when people send me emails and say, hey, Regina, I failed in NCLEX, I failed it in 75, I studied the program and I failed, and I don't know why I failed. And then I see the answers to a question like this, I know exactly why you failed. I know exactly why you felt because you totally let the scenario, you let the clinical picture take you away from your focus. Even now, even now, um, I see people who are choosing the wrong answer. So let's just go over the correct scenario, the correct protocol for a situation like this. And essentially, guys, this all this all this is all this scenario is is a simple it's a simple case of someone asking to see your patient's medical information regardless and i gave you guys a whole bunch of other things i said the client was involved in a motor vehicle accident the client was unresponsive so what none of those things matter because what the crust of the situation is is you have a person in a room asking to see medical information. What is your responsibility as the nurse? What is your responsibility as the nurse? Let me give you guys the correct answer. This is the correct answer. All you are to do is notify the physician. That's it. And what made me so what what made me so passionate about this particular question is because I saw very little of this answer when we posted it. We had hundreds of people responding to this question and the majority of the people picked two or three. So let me go back here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like if this is you, if you pick the wrong answer, this demonstrates that you really don't know your scope of practice. So we're not gonna clear, we're not gonna get above that passing score with these kind of mistakes because if you will just flagrantly let's see so number one some people pick number one um just inform the attorney on the client's medical condition just just give them somebody comes in they say they're they're the client's attorney just go ahead and give it to them you know just go ahead and give them the information is that going to be correct for NCLEX absolutely not absolutely not we would never do that but you know what I I threw in another uh, another pr procedure, which is contact the hospital's ethics committee. And I think some people saw ethics committee and they said, you know, well, that that sounds really good. And this is what we do on NCLEX. We, we see something and we say, well, I don't really know what the ex ethics committee does, but it sounds good if we're talking about legal things. So I'll just pick this because it sounds good. It looks good. And that is definitely not going to be the correct answer because at this point in time, is it your responsibility to go look up the ethics committee number, call them, inform them all of what's happening? No, that's not going to be your priority in this situation. And a lot of people, a lot of nursing students, a lot of people who've been studying with Remar for months and months and months, I'm disappointed to see that they picked option number three, which option number three was call the nearest of kin to obtain consent. Come on, <laughs> call the nearest of kin to obtain consent. There's so many things wrong with this answer that I really, I mean, I really, I really struggle to see why people pick that because number one, number one basically is, it's not the nurse's responsibility to gather a consent ever. That is what we don't do, all right? It is always the doctor's, it is always the doctor's responsibility to get a consent for any kind of procedure, any kind of information release. And I think what made this really 
um, sound appealing to nursing students studying for NCLEX is because it's kind of what we see in the hospital. It's, it's a, this is what's considered a real world answer. You have nurses getting on the phone saying, uh, yeah, this is this is Regina from, you know, medical center. Can I speak to such and such as wife? And then somebody gets on the phone and they're like, yeah, I'm such and such as wife. You don't know if it's the cousin, if it's the aunt. And you're like, um, yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, Mr. Smith's lab values today were irregular. And so we're going to push some potassium or whatever. We wouldn't push potassium, of course, but I'm just trying to make this as ridiculous as possible. Uh, and um, I just want to let you know, keep you updated on his status. Legally, that is totally out of line. Like you're not supposed to be giving medical information over the phone to whoever is saying they're on the other end. So when you get this situation on NCLEX and you pick call the nearest of kin as the nurse to obtain consent, you're totally inappropriate. You are absolutely inappropriate because number one, you as a nurse do not get consent. And the number two, over the phone, who are you speaking to? You have no idea. The, the information, the information that physicians and patients share is totally privileged and it is only to be released if there is a written document in place to say that this attorney is representing me and they have privy to my medical records. So um, we must be very careful when we're encountering situations like this because all it takes is a simple notify the physician. Everything else that you do demonstrates that you're not going to be a safe nurse looking out for your client's needs. So um, the correct answer for this was number four, notify the physician. You guys that have my DVD package, that have the online academy, I let you know that it is the doctor's responsibility to obtain a consent. We as nurses, we only witness. It is also, let me, I mean, I, I did a couple of review slides just for you guys to, to remember here. Um, this was essentially somebody just requesting medical records and medical record requests can come in many forms. There are, there are many people, insurance companies. I could have wrote a scenario where it was an insurance agent coming in to, you know, validate medical expenses. This could have been, um, who else? Attorneys, uh, dentists. I mean, it could have been any other. A lot of people, even the patient, even the patient could come in and say, hey, I want to see my medical records from two years ago. Let me have them. I'm the patient. I want my records. There is a protocol for all of that. There is a protocol. And um, it usually includes written documentation. Right. So it is the it is the responsibility of the physician. It is the responsibility of the physician not only to obtain a consent, but also to validate someone's claim that they have authorization for that consent. So if somebody comes into my patient's room and they say, hey, I need to see I'm the durable power of attorney. I need to see uh, what happened yesterday on the CAT scan. I'm going to call the doctor. I'm going to say, you have somebody here claiming to be the DPA. You need to come and speak to this person, right? Because that's all I have to do as the nurse. I'm not checking credentials. I'm not looking for anything else. So we have to remember that on these very, very basic NCLEX questions. We have to remember that. Also, um, just again, that information is, is privileged. Any kind of health information is always to be kept confidential. It is legally, it is legally your responsibility to make sure it is as confidential as possible. And it is the physician's duty and responsibility to validate any claim. All right. And to make sure that that written document is in place. So I say all that to say, we must be careful. We must be very, very careful um, when we're studying and hold on to the principles that you guys have learned. I come on here every week to help you. So when you take your exam, you can say, I know Regina told me that I'm not supposed to get a consent. So why would I be calling around looking for one? I mean, it's just that simple. So this is what we do here. Uh, I cannot stress you guys enough. I am very happy that you're studying. I'm very proud of you guys for giving yourself the opportunity to get your nursing license, but we have to go with our first mind, not let ourselves be distracted, support and uphold each other, 
during this time because uh, it's easy. Uh, some of us have taken the test and not have passed. And so it's been a rough week for you guys. But I'm just I'm just trying to really stress to you all who have not tested that there are fundamental principles that don't change in nursing, no matter what situation that you're in. And you have to rely on those principles in order to pass this exam. You will pass it. Listen, our class motto, I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. And a part of that is number one, thinking, thinking that you can do it, you will do it, you must do it. But the second half is making sure you have the information. So no matter what the situation is, you're prepared to demonstrate your competency in nursing. Okay. I love you guys too. You guys are, you guys are the reason why I do this every single day. Every testimonial that we get uh, just fuels the company and uh, provides us with, yes, I see it. <laughs> Every every testimonial that you guys get on share, send the videos. We love sending them out. We want to see you. If you pass NCLEX this week, be an encouragement to someone who is testing next week, who is testing next month. We're all a community here at Remar Review. Check out the website. I will see you guys later. Have a great Friday. Love you all. Goodbye.